and it diverges. So it has an infinite selection sequence. What, what can happen? Well, I claim only two things can happen. Either the left part, C, diverges, and so we never get to reduce into C prime. Okay, we'll keep reducing in C. Or, at some point, C reduces to skip, at which point we switch to C prime, and now we have our infinite reduction sequence for C prime. Okay, so basically either C diverges or C terminates and C prime diverges. Okay, well let's write big step rules for that. Ah, I just said that. If uh, C1 diverges, so goes to infinity, then C1 followed by C2 diverges. And if C1 uh, terminates in S1, but then C2 starting in S1 goes to infinity, then uh, the uh, sequence C1, C2 also goes to infinity. And where well, we can write uh, rules for if also. Basically, an if will diverge, well, if the condition is true and the then branch diverges, or if the condition is false and the else branch diverges. A while can diverge in two ways. Well, the condition has to be true, but maybe the body will diverge the first time, so we'll never get to uh, re-executing the loop. Or the body will terminate, but then it's the next iteration of the loop that uh, diverges. Okay? So I claim there are no other uh, possibilities, and so those rules make sense. But, but still, there's a, there's a catch. Uh, so these are inference rules, but there are no axioms. Okay? We don't say this, term, uh, this diverges un unconditionally. And so it seems like if you have a set of inference rules but no axioms, that they define uh, a predicate that is always false, okay? So C in S goes to infinity will always be false with, with that definition. And that's where the uh, co-induction goes in. Um, so Hugo mentioned a lot of, uh, well, inductive data types, co-inductive data types uh, this morning. Uh, let me just give you uh, the, the five minute uh, low level uh, hackers view on uh, induction and co-induction. Uh, so when you have a set of data constructors or a set of axioms and inference rules, and these are exactly the same thing in a system like Cox, well, you can interpret them in two ways. So the inter inductive interpretation is uh, as a least defined predicate that satisfies the axioms and rules. In other terms, it is the smallest fixed point of the kind of functors that uh, Hugo uh, uh, talked about earlier. But there's also a, a simpler view uh, when you're just thinking of proof terms and de derivations in your logic, uh, that uh, basically uh, the inductive interpretation is whatever you can conclude with a finite derivation tree. Okay, so you all know what a derivation tree is, right? You, you start from your hypothesis or axioms, then you apply rules and that you, you, you learn new facts. And so you build a tree like that. And at the end, at the root of the tree, you have your conclusion. And that is a, a proposition that is true. But then there's a co-inductive interpretation, which is a uh, greatest fixed point or the most defined predicate that satisfies your axioms and rules. And in proof theory, that's just conclusions of finite or infinite derivation tree, okay? Who said that the derivations must be finite, okay? We know what an infinite, what an infinite tree is. So, uh, and, and it can actually be, be shown fairly easily that those two views are equivalent. Um, there's been a folklore result, but uh, so Hervé Graal, my co-author, and I couldn't really find a published proof. So we wrote that uh, somewhere in a paper. Um, but let me also in illustrate uh, that uh, in Cox, okay? See some, so that we can see some co-induction in action. Uh, all right, so probably I should resolve that. Probably I should switch here. Okay, so this is going to be a very simple example. We are going to work with uh, natural numbers extended with a point at infinity, okay? So not in, so it's either a finite integer, or inf, meaning infinity. And we are going to define the successor of such a uh, number by saying that the successor of a finite number is its successor, and the successor of infinity is itself, because no one is after infinity. 
And now we want to define even an uh, even number, okay, on this type. So naturally we have uh, by, by axioms and inference rules. So well, zero is even, and if n is even, then successor of successor of n is even. What else could we write, right? And so whatever predicate, uh, a predicate even over Natins satisfies this specification. So it is a solution to this, uh, to this uh, set of rules and axioms if uh, this is true, okay? Even of n is equivalent to n is finite zero or there exists an m, blah, blah, blah. And it's easy to see that there are several predicates that satisfy this spec, okay? And here are two of them. Uh, so the first one is what you would expect. A number is even if it is 2m. This is finite and equal to 2m. And the second one says, oh, but infinity is even as well. Why not? And I can prove with a little bit of uh, uh, hacking that both, uh, both candidates, even one well and even two, satisfy my spec. So they, sat they are solutions to uh, my, uh, my, my inference rules. Okay, uh -huh, let me skip that. Okay, okay, okay. Um, And basically, when you write inference rules uh, as a Cox inductive predicate, all right, so when you write it this way with the inductive keyword, then uh, essentially you get the first one. You get the small one, the one that is false for infinity. Uh, so it's easy to show that it satisfies the spec. And it's even, uh, uh, it's easy to show that this is the smallest solution. So any predicate that satisfies my spec is uh, implied by even of n, even being the inductive interpretation. So that's really the smallest fixed point, as we said, and it's kind of easy to uh, show. But now we can also say, okay, uh, let's interpret this co-inductively. So we get this co-inductive keyword that uh, tells Cog to take the co-inductive interpretation. Notice that these are exactly the same constructor with the same type as, as Hugo uh, uh, noticed uh, uh, remarked this, this morning, uh, but uh, you're going to get a bigger uh, predicate, one that satisfies the spec, as usual, uh, one that, uh, but co-even of infinity holds, and that's where, uh, that's where I really want to show you the proof. Oh, this is too small. No, this is too big. <laughs> oh, this is perfect. Okay, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's Goldilocks and the three bears again. Um, all right, so how do we go about proving that co-even of int holds? We use this uh, cofix uh, tactic of Cog that I'm sure Benjamin Pierce didn't show you. So this one is new, this one is hot, this one will explode in your face at the, at the slightest provocation. And what does it do? It gives you your goal as a hypothesis. <laughs> That's really cool, man. <laughs> because maybe it's going to solve all my proofs because now I can just say, oh, so, okay. And proof completed. But no, uh, get caught at the QED. So the QED is going to say, well, no, 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 this is not a proper proof by co-induction. Uh, because what is a proof by co-induction is basically convincing Cog that there exists an infinite derivation, or finite or infinite derivation of your conclusion, okay? And how do you build, how do you convince someone that an infinite uh, tree exists well, there's uh, a pretty good one, a pretty good way, which is to say, well, let me just write an equation, okay? Uh, X equals, uh, well, let me write this as a tree. Uh, for instance, uh, like this, let's say, X, X, okay? And there's a general theorem that says that uh, such, uh, such an equation has a unique solution in, as an infinite tree. 
which uh, will be, well, this infinite tree, of course. What else? Okay. And yes, it, it satisfies this. However, uh, it's only guarded equations that have such solutions. So if you just write x equals x, okay, then there's no uh, uniquely defined solution. And in a way, this is what we are going, what we are doing with this cofix, okay? Cofix gives you that x and lets you use it, but only uh, under a constructor or under a node or under an internal source. So let's go back to, yes, please. Uh, guarded means, uh, it's kind of hard to define precisely. Uh, so, so for those equations, it means that x, uh, the, the unknown always appear at least under one constructor or one uh, node, one constructor of your data type. And here, well, likewise, that, uh, so you're only using the uh, co-induction hypothesis that Cofix gives you as argument to one or or, or a sequence of inference rules for your data, for your uh, predicate, but in no other context, okay? And if you don't use it in any other context, then Koch knows that this uh, kind of equation has unique solutions that define uh, a proper infinite derivation. Okay, so let's go back, erase that. Uh, and do some work. Um, so what do we do here? Well, I'm noticing that uh, inf is equal to suck of suck of inf. So I just changed the goal. And now uh, I can apply one of my inference rules, okay? The one that concludes uh, co-even uh, suck suck n from co-even of n. Uh, so let me just do that. And that rule has one hypothesis, which is co-even of inf. And since now I have applied one of the constructors of my uh, predicate, I can just say, okay, just use the induction hypothesis. Proof completed, again. And this time, Koch is happy. And so it's a bit of a black magic at first sight, uh, but you get used to it, and it's still much easier than doing co-inductive proofs on paper. When you, when you want to do proofs like co-induction on paper, you have to, uh, by, by, by the book, you really have to set up your, uh, uh, well, set up your, your proof so that you really show that you have a post fix point and whatever. So here, basically, Kirk is doing the checking for you, and you can play fast and loose with uh, co-induction hypotheses, and if you're happy, if you're lucky, sorry, it will work. So, yes. Oh, uh, maybe. <laughs> if, um, yeah, I've recently switched to proof general, so, aha. Uh, twins, uh, inf, co, even, even, up. Uh, hey, it's pretty short, <laughs> actually. So, let me read that to you uh, in, in camel syntax. Uh, let rec co in hip equals co even suck, which is a constructor, applied to uh, inf, which is an argument, and applied to co in hip, which is a recursively uh, defined thing, in, uh, in co in hip. So in, co in, in camel, also, that would build you an infinite uh, tree. Well, well, with a cycle, of course. Uh, but uh, it stands for an infinite tree. It's a graph that stands for an infinite tree. Um, Yes. Uh, yes, indeed. So, so in Coq, if you write inductive or co-inductive, and then uh, uh, the system demands that uh, all constructors are positive and even uh, strictly positive. I think, as uh, Hugo mentioned this morning. Yes. Yeah. So, so you know that the underlying functors are uh, are monotone, and the fixed points exist. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, sometimes by excluding definitions that are actually positive but, but don't look like they are positive. Uh, but yes, uh, this is uh, when, when automatic checks. Okay, so co-even of inf uh, holds, and I even have the proof term to uh, prove it. 
And of course, even of int uh, does not hold, and that can be proved. Uh, uh, po -po -po, uh, yeah, because uh, even one of int doesn't hold, and uh, even is the smallest exponent, therefore it is less defined, uh, for instance. Uh, so, so really we have uh, two different notions here, and we can even show, again by co-induction, that the co-even is the really the greatest fixed point. So any other predicate over an attain that satisfies the spec for even implies co-even of n, okay? So even of n implies p of n, where p is any solution, which implies co-even of n. All right, so that was my five minute intro to uh, co-induction uh, in class. More than five, oh damn, I have to, uh, I have to hurry then. Um, and now let's apply this to the semantics of imp. Uh, 